So who is Allah? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one who created trees. And as far as our knowledge goes, trees do not communicate with each other. Yes? Have you ever heard a talking tree? But you know what they found out? They found out that the acacia trees, the acacia trees in the savannas of Kenya and Tanzania, when the impala or when the wildebeest or when some other kind of antelope comes to eat from that tree, they found that two things happen. Number one, the acacia tree, the moment the antelope is biting some of the leaves to eat the leaves, the acacia tree secretes tannin, which is the same chemical which is found in tea also, for example. It secretes tannin into the leaves which makes the leaves very bitter. So after eating a few mouthfuls, the deer does not eat anymore because it cannot bear that bitter taste. Now if the matter ended with that, it would be amazing enough in itself. But the matter does not end with that. You know what they discovered? They discovered that on this savanna, which is maybe a hundred miles wide, there are deer which come to one corner of the savanna and they are eating some acacia trees there. They, measured, they, looked, they found that trees which are several miles away from those trees simultaneously at the same time also start generating tannin. And they say that we do not know how, but those trees are communicating with all the trees in the savanna and saying, watch out, the deer are here, save yourself. According to us, trees cannot talk, yeah? They don't know how they do it, but they do it. They have measured actually in Africa groups, family groups of elephants. Communicate across not hundreds of miles, thousands of miles. Obviously sound doesn't reach that far, so what is the means of this communication? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created a bird that big, so small, three and a half grams in weight, called the ruby-throated hummingbird. It's a bird of the rainforest of South, Africa, South America. It's found in Chile and Guyana and those areas. I used to live in Guyana once upon a time and the first time I saw this bird in the rainforest I thought it was a moth. It looks like a, it looks like a moth. Buzzes. It beats its wings at more than a thousand RPM. And it's the only bird, the hummingbird is the only bird which can fly backwards and forwards and up and down and so on because it has a long beak and it lives and survives on nectar. So it inserts the beak into the flower and drinks the nectar. Three and a half grams in weight. This bird migrates. Where does it migrate? It goes from South America all the way up to North America to the bank of the Mississippi River. A distance of over 2,000 miles. And part of that migration is across the Gulf of Mexico. The Gulf of Mexico is 600 miles wide. That is not a water bird. This is a small bird. If it lands in the water, it's dead. It becomes fish food. How long does it take to go across 600 miles? 26 hours. What is the meaning of 26 hours? It means the sun, if the bird takes off at sunrise, the whole day passes, the bird is flying across the open ocean. Little bird that size is flying across the open ocean. Sun sets, night falls, pitch dark night, no moon, no stars, 
the bird continues to fly across the open ocean, does not lose energy, does not lose direction, flies all night. Next morning the sun rises, two hours into the next day, the bird lands in the United States of America without a visa. That is the meaning of 26 hours of continuous flight. I am sure there are some of you who think you are very fit, yeah? Give you a challenge. Do what a three and a half gram bird can do and I will give you a million dollars. Go on your feet, whether you walk or run or crawl. Travel 600 miles in 26 hours and I will give you a million dollars. You think we can do it? Can any human being do it? Another bird, which has the record for the longest non-stop flight in the world. How long is the longest non-stop flight? This bird is called the bar-tailed godwit. It's a bird about that size, the size of a small chicken. Long beak, long, long legs, it's a wader, it, it, uh, it eats fish and small crabs and so on by the seaside. This bird flies non-stop from Alaska to New Zealand. Takes off in Alaska, imagine the globe. Takes off in Alaska, comes all the way down to New Zealand. A distance of 11,000 kilometers. Does that in nine days and nights. Continuous flight for nine days and nine nights. No food, no water, no sleep. You know what they've discovered? They've discovered that half the brain of the bird sleeps and the other half is awake, and after a few hours, the, uh, the half which was awake sleeps, and the other half is awake. They have no idea how it happens. Ask yourself a question. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said about His power to feed, إِنَّ اللَّهَ هُوَ الرَّزَّاقُ ذُو الْقُوَّةِ الْمَتِينَ Allah said, Allah is the Razzaq, and Allah feeds by His power. So this Allah who is Razak Udul Quwwat Il Mateen cannot feed the ruby-throated hummingbird sitting in Chile peacefully and calmly and quietly in the rainforest. Allah is forced and compelled to send this poor little bird across 600 miles of ocean to the United States to go and eat a few flowers there. Why is it happening? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who is Razak Udul Quwwat Il Mateen cannot feed the bar-tailed godwit sitting in Alaska peacefully where it is. Allah needs, na'udhu billah, to send it 11,000 kilometers flying non-stop all the way down to New Zealand to eat. So why is Allah doing it? Another bird. Called the bar-headed goose. Which again takes off in Alaska. It has a record for the highest altitude flying. Bar-headed geese take off and they fly in flocks. And Ajib the Qudrat of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Bar-headed geese fly in flocks. And they form a V formation. They form a V formation because the goose in the, in the middle at the spearhead of the V has to go through the wind so it takes the pressure of the wind on its chest. And it creates, it opens the wind and the other geese follow and for them the flight is easier because that one is making a lot of effort. And then what happens? After a while that one falls back and the next one takes its place. Ajeeb, eh? And they fly and they talk to one another. They talk to one another. I remember a morning, very early morning in Mysore, on the bank of the Krishna river. And I was sitting there very early in the morning. The sun had not risen yet. Sun was just, just the, the, the light of the sun was coming. And we saw the bar-headed geese coming in. You have to see them, subhanAllah. They talk to one another. You can hear them a mile away, talking to one another, as they are coming in. 
And may Allah forgive me, I was sitting there for something which is halal for us, but it is not good for the goose. I was sitting there to shoot some geese. But you know what those geese did? I didn't, that day I didn't shoot anybody. I, mean, I, I was so, I got so taken away with what was I was seeing that I couldn't pull the trigger of the gun. But you know what they do? When you shoot the goose and one of them is wounded and falls, one more comes down and stays with his companion until he can take the companion with him or until the companion dies. Ajib, I still remember the scene. The sun was coming up and there was a, this, this reformation of geese which came into the sun and disappeared because of the light of the sun and then came out again from the other side. SubhanAllah. You know what height these geese fly at? They fly at a height of 35,000 feet. The same height at which your plane flies when you go from here to Australia or Malaysia or Dubai. Same height. For the same reason. Because the geese go up at 35,000 feet to hit the jet stream current, which is a current of air that circles the earth. And when they hit the current of air, they go at a thousand miles a day at that speed. They are like arrows. The wind drives them. So they save a lot of energy. But you know the problem of 35,000 feet? The problem is that 35,000 feet the temperature is minus 59 degrees Celsius. The temperature inside your fridge is minus 4 and you put the same goose into the fridge it will freeze. But that same goose flies at minus 59 degrees Celsius. The second problem with 35,000 feet is that there is not enough oxygen to breathe. If you and I went up at 35,000 feet, you would be dead in less than a second because you would freeze to death. You wouldn't even, one breath you take and your lungs would turn to ice. But you know what they found? They found that bar-headed geese breathe better in the absence of oxygen, in low oxygen atmospheres. What are you saying in plain language? You are saying when there is no air, they breathe better. SubhanAllah, Ajib. Ajib. Once again the question, why is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, why did He create all of these things for what? He created it for one reason only. So that you and I understand the tafsir of His kalam. When He said, أَوَلَمْ يَرَوْا إِلَى الطَّيْرِ فَوْقَهُمْ صَافَّاتٍ وَيَقْبِذٍ مَا يُمْسِكُهُنَّا إِلَّا الرَّحْمَانِ إِنَّهُ بِكُلِّ شَيْءٍ بَصِيرٌ مَا يُمْسِكُهُنَّا إِلَّا الرَّحْمَانِ Allah said, do they not see the birds flying above their heads? Who is holding, holding them up? Who supports them except our Rahman? But our problem is we read the kalam of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as if there is no creation and we look at the creation as if there is no creator. Subhanallah. We have fractured our education system. We have fractured our education system. The education which was supposed to open our hearts and our eyes to the creator produces atheists. Can you imagine something as insane as that? How can you be an atheist? How can you be a learned person about the universe and you be an atheist? How is it possible? Because of the fractured system of education. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala taught us how to educate. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, إِنَّ فِي خَلْقِ السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ وَاقْتِلَافِ اللَّيْلِ وَالنَّهَارِ لَا يَاتِلْ لِيُولِ لَلْبَابِ الذين يذكرون الله قياما وقعودا وعلى جنوبهم ويتفكرون ويتفكرون في خلق السماوات والأرض ربنا ما خلقت هذا باطلا سبحانك سبحانك فقنا عذاب النار. Allah said verily in the creation of the heavens and the earth and the alternation of the day and the night there are signs for people of intelligence. Who are the people of intelligence? 
الذين يذكرون الله قياما وقعودا وعلى جنوب